Hi everyone, welcome to Search Research with Dr. Sam, your online thesis advisor and guide. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the different ways you can combine qualitative and quantitative research to improve your rigor of research, your research findings, the quality of research, overall impact of research. So today in this video, I will tell you 11 ways of combining qualitative and quantitative research. So let's get started. The first one is the logic of triangulation. I am sure if you are studying about research methods, you might have come across this word triangulation. What is triangulation? The findings from one type of study can be checked against the findings deriving from the other type. For example, the results of a qualitative investigation might be checked against a quantitative study. So if you have taken a student survey, a quantitative survey on a Likert scale, which has indicated that the students are really engaged with the type of learning a teacher has adopted in the classroom, the qualitative surveys through interviews or focus groups should indicate the same. That is combining the qualitative and quantitative to achieve a triangulation of results. Sometimes the qualitative research will facilitate the quantitative research. So qualitative research may help to provide some background information on context and subjects, act as a source of hypothesis and aid in the scale construction. So let's make a simple example here. Let's say you are trying to find out if a certain research problem exists or not. So what you can then do is start off with some qualitative research, some interviews from research participants to find out if a certain problem you are thinking of really exists or not. If that is confirmed, then you can carry out a further in-depth investigation through quantitative surveys, which can appeal to a larger uh, population. So you can start off with qualitative surveys with a smaller population, say six to eight or 10 people, and then that will confirm the existence of a problem which you can then investigate in a larger scale through a wide quantitative service. Similarly, quantitative research may facilitate qualitative research. Usually this means that the quantitative research helps with the choice of subjects for a qualitative investigation. So like I say, the problem with quantitative surveys is that you cannot get an in-depth analysis of your findings. But if you do get an indication of what you are trying to investigate, you can go further deeper or delve into it through a qualitative, let's say interview or focus group where you don't have to gather a population of 500, 600 people. You can find out the initial uh, findings from your quantitative survey and then delve deeper into it to get more in-depth analysis into it from a smaller group. So it is reverse of what I previously mentioned. Sometimes quantitative and qualitative research are combined in order to provide a overall general picture. Quantitative research may be employed to plug the gaps in a qualitative study that arise. Because for example, the researcher cannot be in more than one place at any one time. Alternatively, it may be that not all issues are amenable solely to a quantitative investigation or solely to a qualitative one. So there could be some research questions which need a qualitative research approach. And similarly, there could be some research questions which need purely a quantitative approach. So that could be observations or experiments or some other kind of methodology. So you answer, you combine the two research because you know that the answer to your research question can only be found through one of these means, right? So you could have two or three research questions in your thesis and you are trying to get one answer through a qualitative and the other answer through a quantitative study. Quantitative research is especially efficient at getting at the structural features of social life. Whereas qualitative studies are usually stronger in terms of the processual aspects. So what does that mean? That means that qualitative study helps us to understand why something is happening. So quantitative is more about the structure. We know something is happening. This is the way people think or you know, this is their perception about it. But why is it to get deeper into it, to understand the process behind it, the thinking behind it? You know, you go deeper into the 
qualitative process. The quantitative research is usually driven by the researcher's concerns. So the researcher normally frames the questions and you know he has a logical structure to his questionnaire and the participants respond to that. Whereas qualitative research takes the subject's perspective. So it could be more of the open-ended questions as the point of departure. So you may ask a question, but you are not really sure as to how they will respond. There is no, there is no structured response. There is no Likert scale. There is no scale of one, two, three, four, five, or agree, strongly disagree. You might go with, you might get an answer that you are not expecting or get something that you are expecting as well. Sometimes we also combine qualitative and quantitative to make the findings more generalizable. So the addition of quantitative evidence to qualitative or vice versa helps us to know whether the findings are generalizable to other contextual settings or not, whether similar or completely different. But ideally, your research findings should be generalizable. It should be applicable to other settings also. All right. So if you say that improved lighting helps in improving the productivity of workers in a glass factory, then it should be the same maybe in an electronic manufacturing parts factory as well. So improved lighting or uh, you know more breaks lead to better productivity or less breaks lead to better productivity. So if you find something, is it generalizable? Is it if you I transfer the settings to another factory or another country or another setting, will it be similar or not? Qualitative research may facilitate the interpretation of relationships between variables. So quantitative research readily allows the researcher to establish relationship among the variables. But it is often weak when it comes to exploring the reasons for those relationships. Here, a qualitative study can be used to help explain the factors underlying the broad relationships. All right, so let's say if you think that uh, doing dramatics in the class to explain a concept engages the student, so the quantitative survey will show that yes, they are getting engaged, but it is the qualitative survey that will reveal why they are getting engaged. What are the reasons? And you'll be surprised to know that different students may have different reasons for engagement. Then employing both quantitative and qualitative research may provide a means of bridging the macro and the micro gulf. So quantitative research can often tap large scale structural features of social life. For example, getting a survey of 2000, 3000 people, you know, increasing the population side, the more is the population side, the, the stronger is your research founding because you feel that, you know, you're getting data for more people. So imagine doing a community survey, but if you are just asking questions from six or 10 families, that is not representative of the sample. But if you are trying to get a sample of, let's say, 100, 200 families in a community, that could be quite representative. However, it is the qualitative research that tends to address the small scale behavioral aspects. How a certain family behaves in a community is what you can get. So that is how you bridge the macro with the micro to find that or address that gulf or the gap. Quantitative and qualitative research may be also appropriate to different stages of a longitudinal study. So you might do an initial st uh, study. Let's say, you know, you have uh, used simulators to train nurses to respond to emergencies. And then after a few months, you go at the workplace and employ a quantitative or a qualitative research to see whether some of those nurses who underwent training through simulators are they really being able to respond to similar emergencies based on the simulator training? So it's a longitudinal study where you study the same participants, but after a period of time, initially you might use a qualitative or a quantitative, and then later on in the period, you might use a, the opposite, the, either the qualitative or the quantitative as well. Finally, you have the hybrid research when qualitative research is conducted within a quasi-experimental quantitative research design. So it is part of the design itself where you combine the qualitative and the quantitative. So uh, this is where the research design is such that you have to conduct the qualitative research within the quantitative research itself. It's kind of a mixed research design, which requires because some of the questions that you are asking the participants may require uh, a quantitative response, whereas, whereas within the same questionnaire, you may also have a qualitative research design, open-ended questions, which will 
get the required response the in-depth analysis so the same instrument has both of them incorporated within each other so i've tried to give you some simple examples here we'll go deeper into it but this is mainly to explain what are the different ways to combine the qualitative and quantitative and why it is required what are the benefits of it or what are the downsides of it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i try to keep these videos short so that uh, you are not too bored listening to uh, lectures but let me know what you think about this video more videos to follow and good luck with your studies bye for now